Hey guys, today we're going to be talking about the Pro Moto Billet Fastway Spark Arrester. It's US Forest Service approved. There's the stamp. Uh, it has a little screen in it. You can get these from Rocky Mountain, uh, which is where I got mine from, or straight from Pro Moto Billet. Went this route uh, for my stock canisters instead of going with a new exhaust because I really don't have any interest in doing an exhaust on this bike. I'm not sure how long I'm even going to have it. Um, I just want to make sure that I can ride with my kids in the trails. So first thing I did was I labeled the two sides. I've already done the throttle side, um, but then you're going to need a 10 millimeter socket or wrench to take off, loosen this bolt, take this bolt out, and then uh, slide the exhaust off. So I'm going to slide it off, take it over to the bench, and then I'll come back. All right. So I have my stock canister here for the clutch side. I put a C on it. Um, what I'm going to do now is you got to drill all these rivets out. You can kind of see them here. Uh, you use a 13 64th drill bit to do that. It's the only drill bit you'll need throughout this whole process. Uh, you'll also need yourself a set of smaller Allen wrenches. Um, let's see if I can get zoomed in so you can see the sizes there. Probably not, probably too blurry, but anyway, uh, that, and it comes with the screws and everything. This is a super, super, super simple install. I already did it on the other side. So let's drill out one of these here. Let's go nice and slow. You don't gotta push too hard. You don't need to go obviously through the canister just until it gets through the center of the rivet all the way. Just like that, rivet comes off. I'm going to go ahead and drill the rest of these out and then I'll be back with you. Okay, so I've drilled all of the rivets out except for one. I wanted to show you guys this too. Um, you, Like I said, you don't want to put very much pressure on it. If you do, you can actually end up causing the rivet to spin and grabbing the bit. Let's see if I can show you here. See, it's spinning, it's not actually drilling. So what I do then is I take a pair of vice grips and get it clamped down on the rivet and then very slowly with very light pressure continue drilling. And then voila. Just like that. Alright, so now what you're gonna do is you have to get this this end out. What I found is that to, just a good old bashing works really well. You're not going to use this end cap again. Um, the old one here somewhere on the, for the other side. Uh, this is what it looks like when it comes out. Uh, and you can see I just kind of beat the crap out of it until it broke free from here uh, and then pulled it right out. And I'll get that done and then I'll be right back. Okay, I've got it loose. Now, just pull that out. Now this here, the end of the wadding, you're gonna pull off. Um, you can't use that. This new cap, obviously, uh, is quite a bit smaller. You can see there, compared to the new cap. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this off here. I was able on the other one just to tear it off. Um, looks like it's pretty much going to work the same way on this one. Uh, I don't, you don't want to touch it too much uh, because it obviously is you know, fiberglass. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to try to shove this back down in here a little bit. Okay, make sure that that pipe in there is exposed uh, for this piece to push right up against uh, and so I'm gonna have to take some more off it looks like for this to actually go maybe not yeah definitely see so you can see all the, the stuff there so I'm gonna go ahead and get this cut off and I'll be back all right so I went ahead and cut it back and stuffed it in there a little bit better. So now what you're gonna do 
set this aside. Put my knife away here. Um, what you need to do now is you need some high temp silicone. I just bought this Mega Black from O'Reilly's. Uh, there's several different brands, but you can use whatever one you feel comfortable with. And then you're going to take a and put a nice, a, just a small bead around the edge of this. This is not very pretty, <laughs> but it'll do. Okay, I'm going to put my nail back in there. If stuff dries out overnight, so don't don't let it just sit. So now you need to make sure that you have the right, correct side up. Um, and so obviously the bracket is the top, and you'll see on here that there it actually tells you that this is the left side or the clutch side with an L. The other side obviously has an R. So you obviously want that end up. And then you're going to take this and just set it down on top. And then I'm just going to use a regular hammer because I'm lazy and just don't really feel like going to find my rubber hammer. Just really, really light taps. You don't need much at all. Get this to go. So, there we go. So you can see you got some silicone on the outside of that there. You want this hammer? Here. Come on. Okay, so then I'm going to take a rag, clean the excess silicone off. You just want to make sure that as you put these, you drill these next holes for the self-tapping screws that come with it, that you have this edge seated all the way. It's got a nice edge on it, so it won't go too far, and it's tapered, so it's pretty easy to get it in. Uh, you just want to make sure that you have it flat all the way around. So you're going to drill these holes one at a time. Let me get rid of that um, one at a time. And so we're going to use our 13 16 drill bit again. Drill a hole right in the center of where your rivets were. Again, being careful, you don't need to go through the canister, just into it. And so before you drill another hole so that you know that this is seated and compacted all the way down in, then we'll take one of these screws, <laughs> one of these screws here, and you're going to, you can start it by hand, it's pretty easy. Uh, and then you take your Allen wrench, that, oh, it's right in front of me. Just start threading it in there. These are self-tapping, um, so it does get hard, and then it gets quite easy after that. Just want to make sure you're going in straight. So I'm going to get this one all the way in, uh, and then I'm going to drill the other holes and get those in. I uh, think you can figure that part out. You don't really got to see it, uh, and then I'll come back. So there's our first screw. You can see that's butted. All the way up against there that black color is the silicone that's down in the crack um, and so now again you just want to make sure you do one at a time and uh, go all the way around the canister all right well we got all our screws in they're all tight good to go the kit actually does come with uh, one more, which is kind of cool. I put everything in, you know, a little magnetic tray. Uh, it also comes with four Allen machine screws. These are for the end cap. So, a short one and a long one for each side. If you get one of these, 
uh, kits, whether it's from Rocky Mountain like I did, or if it's from Promoto or, or wherever else you get it. Uh, it will come with one or two, depending on if your bike from the factory came with one end cap or one exhaust uh, canister or two. Um, in this case, it's an 07 CRF 250R, so it came with two. So the next portion, the last portion, is you gotta put your screens in. So here's a little screen. These are super cheap. It's said to actually, obviously, kind of quiet the bike down too, which I'm not against. Uh, we ride at our house as well. Uh, we have a couple acres, and our, our neighbors, I'm sure, don't love it when I take my bike out. <laughs> So this will maybe kind of help that a little bit. Uh, but all you're going to do is drop the screen in, just like that. And then you're going to take the cap. Obviously, make sure you put it right side up. Tab up. Just like that. Sits down in there. And then, oh, look at that. It actually came with two extras. It's kind of obvious which one goes where. <clears throat> uh, this is obviously thicker material here at this end than it is at that end where that hole is. It's kind of hard to see. Um, so long on the obvious side and short on the obvious side as well. So we're going to take these. Just get these tightened down here. Short one in the top. Knock them both down. Uh, I am going to check these after a few rides. I may end up putting some silicone in them um, or just some Loctite or something too. Would probably would suffice as well. Uh, just to see if these caps back out. Because if they back out, your screen's most certainly going to come out. Uh, that's the only downside I can see to these, but there it is. So it looks much, much better than the previous big giant cap that was on there. So yeah, looking forward to this. It's, uh, it's I mean, it's still a lot of money. Don't get me wrong. It's two hundred and fifty-nine dollars for my bike. They're anywhere from eighty-five. Uh, obviously, if you only need one of them, it's going to be cheaper. Uh, but I'm really looking forward to being able to get out in the woods and ride with my kids on this bike. Uh, and then it didn't set me back so far that I know I'm not going to get my money out of new exhaust anyway. Uh, as everybody knows, when you when you build something, you never get what you put into it, out of it. So, yeah, there we go. Now I'm going to go install this back on the bike. And uh, probably the next video I do will be riding in our yard. With it testing them out, seeing how it works. I did a bunch of other tuning to the bike too, um, and uh, clean up the carburetor. Uh, so, should be fun. Thanks for watching.